This is a joystick. This joystick was recovered from a CCTV system uh, which was heading towards the recycling. And I thought it was quite interesting. It has an X axis, a Y axis, and a Z axis. Now, obviously I've pulled it out of the old equipment and now I need to figure out what it is and how it works. It's got a helpful label on it which enables us to get to the website where we can look up the specifications. The nearest data sheet I could find to what I think is the joystick is this one for a 3000 series from the APEM website. The naming convention doesn't bear any resemblance to the number that's on the side of the device. Um, so I'm guessing really more than anything what is interesting in this uh, document is that it's actually got the the wiring essentially what the color coding of the wires are and I will be using this um, my suspicion is even if it isn't a 3000 series joystick it'll use the same wiring colors because why would you change them between models the other candidate for it for the model of joystick is the 9000 series which would make more sense with given the number that's on the side of the switch itself however this is definitely a two axis uh, switch not a three axis switch so it might might not be this one um, the specification on this page basically looks very similar Again, the naming, the numbering convention does not mean anything at all compared to the number on the side, other than the fact that it starts with a 9. On the website for the 9000 series switch, as opposed to the, 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 the what would, you'd laughingly call a data sheet, um, it does tell us some more information about the electrical specifications. Uh, this particular model apparently runs from 4.75 to 15 volts. The supply current is typically 10 milliamps. And the load should be more than 10 kiloohms. Before I connect this up to any power, because the, the, there's some ambiguity as to what model it actually is, I'm going to meter across the connections and just make sure I'm not going to blow anything up. So the first connection I'm going to meter across will be the power to see what the sort of uh, what sort of load it presents to the power supply. And you can see from the the the, the, the picture that uh, the red wire and the black wire are power, as you might expect and metering across them we get about a kilo which is which is fine I mean that's not going to pull very much current at all even if I connect it directly across the power supply um, on the center tap so that's the green one we've got between plus and the green about 600 ohms which is slightly more than half um, which would indicate that the tap isn't just off center between red and black so I'm just going to connect it across the zero the black wire and the green um, to see what it is and that seems quite low comparatively we've got short uh, oh yeah right okay so I've shorted it a little bit and that's basically the same as between the red and the green so again it, it probably is a center point but it's not directly connected 
to the power rails. Now connecting onto the Z axis, which is the purple wire, you can see we've got about two kilo ohms. Uh, now I'm not quite sure how this works, um, so we're just going to give it a twiddle and see if, see if the value changes as we do. And it does. It's interesting. So it seems to go from one and a half kilo ohms to. That's bizarre. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that's doing. Seems to be some sort of potometer, 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 uh, variable resistance, but not sure. Uh, but it certainly varies moving it. Connecting it to the yellow wire, which is the Y axis. Um, we can see that we've got quite a high resistance and that twiddling the knob doesn't make any difference to that resistance. That's kind of what I'm expecting because it's a hall, they should be hall effect switches or magnet, yeah, switches. Um, so I'm just going to connect it to the other one, so that's the blue wire, which is the x axis, and again, that doesn't move at all uh, when I wiggle the stick. Good. Um, so what's left to do now is I'm just going to wiggle the stick whilst connecting to the, well firstly to the purple wire again because I forgot to do that. And this is just to make sure that moving the X and the Y axis doesn't interfere with that value and it doesn't. And now I'm going to connect to the centre point and wiggle the stick for the same reason, to see make sure it doesn't may change and it doesn't. So I reckon now we are safe to connect this up to a power supply and I will connect it up to a 3.3 volt power supply because that is the lowest voltage that is available model that is available for this joystick. So we've got the scope on the screen and we've got the four traces for four different things. Um, the yellow is the y-axis and I have to say I'm quite pleased to see that move up and down. Um, actually, let's do that again. Oh man, that's fun. Technology, isn't it great? Uh, the blue axis is the horizontal, the x-axis. You can see that does the same thing, which is excellent. And then we've got the red axis, which just goes up and down like so. Um, I'd say that that's working. Uh, the, green, the green line is just the center tap and that doesn't change so it's doing what I expect.